absolute legend, absolute legend. He's a machine. But he is gonna go out for eight hours per day. To be honest, I've never seen a guy guide so long on the water. Yeah, he has a goal and he's trying to reach it. His dedication is just something else. Uh, he kind of took everything that Yannick did as well, like inspiration, and did all those uh, rotations and board offs. And I don't know, I think this guy just went for it. I used to see him here in Tarifa super often, but he was just the guy that was literally <laughs> giving lessons on the beach at, at Club Mistral in, in Val de Vaquera. Super hard working, but I, I honestly didn't really know him that well. And then, yeah, he started to, to progress and he had a goal in mind and he just stuck to it for, I guess, two, three years. His progression is, it's second to none, really. I mean, it's, I can't think of a guy who's had a faster progression at the top and has become arguably the face of Big Air and doing it on a kite that's unproven. Yeah, I mean, you always hear these success stories about people saying, I put my mind to it and I can achieve anything. Um, and then you're kind of thinking, yeah, sure, you just got lucky. This sport really is quite ridiculous. These kites are basically pieces of fabric stitched together into a wing. Daring kiters pump them up at the beach and tether themselves to the fabric with thin, strong strings. Harnessing only the power of the wind and the water, they jump as high as 10-story buildings. Their velocities match a cheetah's sprint as they traverse distances as far as three football fields. With forces like these at play, you can imagine the consequences of the slightest misstep. Cape Town, I beat him in two heats. I'm not the best rider. Full power, he podiums, comes second in the competition, almost looks like he can beat Yannick, which is saying something. And then three weeks later, we see him doing like the first backroll kite loop board off laid back that I've seen maybe other than Yannick or, or Ayrton. And then he goes to Egypt a few weeks after that and he's doing doobie board offs. That's a double boogie loop board off. And he's, it's like, what? Who is this guy? My name is Giel Vlucht. I'm from Holland and I'm 27 years old. I've been kiting for about nine years now. Uh, I've been teaching the first six and a half, seven years. Maybe one and a half years ago, I said, okay, this is the path I want to go for, for sure, like 100% all out, maybe already two years ago. I think I spend more time on the water than any other rider. And that's a bold claim. I think I was training the most when I still had my van and I was sleeping at the spot. So I would be awake by 7.30 because the wind would just move the van so much that I wouldn't be able to sleep. Get into the water, go back to get like breakfast, lunch thing, maybe take a power nap, go for the second session, eat again, sleep again, go for a third session. And then basically until sunset and the next day was the same. Last year at some point there was this Levante for like one and a half week. And I think I kited about five to seven hours every day for one and a half week. And it was the best time of my life. <laughs> I loved it, yeah. So I always looked up to, to the guys in Balneario doing laid back rolls and boogies and that was the thing, you know, so I always thought, man, they're landing everything, it's incredible. And then I, I trained to get to there and then I was there and then I think I did an hour of kiting where my hair was still dry. And instead of just loving that, I was like, man, it means I'm ready for the next step, right? So. I just wanted to do the next thing. And then we started doing board of rotations. Yannick was 
doing way more than any of us was. And I was just thinking, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we trying it at least? And I think with big air kiting, you find that if you start trying it, you're closer than you think. You are with Ocean Rodeo. Yes. What was the reason <laughs> you left your previous sponsor? Um, so that was my plan all along, to just spend my money and, and live the life, let's say, and then hope that a sponsor, or preferably my sponsor, picks me up. In the end, it, I didn't leave because I didn't work well with Core. I left because I kind of needed to get a source of income because I was running out of the money that I've saved. Of course, it's a risky move. I mean, you're going from Core, which is one of the biggest brands, one of the best kites um, produced here, to a very small brand that people don't really know. I think the first time I had my hands on, a, on the Ocean Rodeo, I think I did a boogie. And when I came out of the boogie, I was on a nine or a 10, I think a 10. Um, the kite was back at three already. So it made a full loop and then it went back to three because I was just used to cranking the bar. And the first thing I thought was, wow, man, this kite would go double. Basically, <laughs> still my reaction, actually. Well, I'm like, whoosh, I like, ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if it goes wrong, it's damn, that's gonna hurt, like, whoosh. He just did something that everybody thought would be impossible. And but it, the initial reaction, like, wow, this is completely out of this world. I find that, uh, okay, there's gonna never to stop the level, you know? There's always gonna be push. I don't know, uh, I find that cool. I would like to try, I think, one day. I was just thinking, I need something. I need something special. For sure, I'm gonna try the S-loop because I already, like, landed one the day before the competition. And then I got out of the water and Zara, my girlfriend, was on the beach and she's like, yeah, that was sick. And Andrea just did one too. Yeah, I, I said, what the fuck? I said, I need to do it, also me. Man, come on, I need something. I need something special. Um, and then I was thinking about the double kite loop and I just thought, why not? Let's just try it. The conditions are good. They were like really big kickers. Um, I was pretty powered on the eight and just thought, why not? Let's just give it a go. And I think the first one I did is the same thing as I said before. It's just important not to panic. For my entire life, every loop I've done is just one, and you stop. And now you've done one, and you kind of look at your bar still being completely turned, and you just go for another one. I did another one, and immediately got rid of the board because the drop after it is really scary. It's different to anything you've, you've felt. But just before I hit the water, I kind of got caught. And then I was like, man, I think I can land it. I think in the future the gear's going to keep evolving and our tricks are going to keep getting better and better because of that as well and there's still such a big category of tricks we haven't pushed yet that we're going to tap into so I think over the next sort of five to ten years Big Air's just going to explode, just keep exploding. Big Air's gone through an unbelievable change, it almost feels like overnight and for me I think what really Help, has helped change the sport. I think the equipment has changed a lot too. It's a lot more accessible now to go out in strong winds. You know, even seeing people take their hands off the bar before they jump, in my mind, is hard to get around. There was no way you could take a hand off the bar with maybe our, our sea kites. And I felt 
we really pushed that part of it to as far as it could possibly go. And then it took somebody, heel really in my eyes, to completely change upside down what we thought was the most amazing thing, which was to take the biggest kite as possible and loop it as level as you can. Somebody turned it all the way upside down, which was actually to think about taking a smaller kite and going out in lighter wind, and then that opened the door to being able to, to loop it twice. And I definitely think the, the bridled kites now, they loop in a different way, um, and it's just made it a bit more accessible. I never thought young people would get into big air. I thought it was an experience thing. I thought we had an advantage being over 30, and that's completely not the case now. I mean, starting off, I want to talk about guys like Ruben Lenton inventing the first mega loop, you know, doing the first mega loop. I mean, Aaron Hadlow with the Kite Loop KGB. I mean, Nick Jacobson with his style, his stunts, just going absolutely massive. I mean, Kevin Langery pushing the limits of height in King of the Air. There have been some incredible riders. And yeah, I mean, those are just the old guys. I mean, now when you look at the young guys, the level was doing this over the past few years. And then the youngsters are just taking it up to a whole other level. Bill and Yannick, I would say they're the, the two that have shaped the sport, uh, especially Yannick with the contra loops and Hill with the double loops. And it's just opened up an, another door of possibilities and tricks. There are quite a few riders who have definitely really impressed me with their riding. And I think three main ones is for sure Hill, who, who really came from being a kite instructor to yeah, being one of the best kite surfers in the world. But also there are those two young Italians that are absolutely killing every single other person on the spot. And action. I think they are 16, maybe 17. And they are going for tricks that nobody can really do. Oh, the two Italians are just a breath of fresh air. So stoked to be part of all of this, you know, to just go from, from almost nothing to international team. You know, they're some of our, if not the top riders on our big air team now, you know, alongside Liam and, and Aaron. It's just, I think we're going to see very big things from both of them. And they're pushing each other in a very um, friendly way. There's competition there, of course, but um, they're good friends and I think that's a good thing. It's changing so much fast. In one year, it's changed a lot, the bigger. Really crazy. What are some of the changes you've seen? First, I saw Yannick with all his contra loops and these things, a lot of rotation, contra loop, board off, and now it's for sure GL, double loops, S loops, all these things. The future, uh, I think, uh, uh, will go in this way, uh, with double loop. But let's see, uh, because uh, all day, uh, we improved some new trick, uh, so the kite uh, can change again uh, for sure. Um, so those two yeah, really stand out for me. What about some female riders? Watch the next episode over here. And big thank you to Makani Beach Club and Cork Kiteboarding for sponsoring Fight for Flight.